My next step will be to move to the footprint builder, selecting the QFP package, which defaults in this case to a 64-pin package. I will now annotate show, demonstrating the integration to the symbol model, including the pin name, pin direction, and pin groups. And I will display a report of all missing pin assignments. In this particular case, the missing pin assignments will be the two fiducials and one thermal pad. But if I'd made an error in the original data sheet or the data sheet was incorrect, I could easily isolate the specific pins which are missing. Configuring both tabs, I can correlate and verify the symbol model to the footprint. I can attach the footprint model name, the land pattern, PCB footprint land pattern name directly to the symbol model. So for when we export it, the relationship is created and formed. And now I can export the specific parts to my EDA tooling systems. We will be demonstrating one more part here. But first, I will reset, after saving this particular part, I will reset the displays using the reset command versus which I could easily do is just after saving, shut down and restart the, uh, the tool itself. Let's reset the specific parts. And let's move to the PDF extraction, where this time I will take a more complex data sheet, a Cypress part. Now, in this particular case, the part is actually modeled as what we call a split table. The first table is actually a 165-pin FPGA pin diagram. So let's take this information and create a template of that diagram information. Now the way I create a template here is first I'm going to bound the area that I wish to capture with a bounding box. Next, I will define the number of rows and columns. A count of 15 rows and 11 columns. Generating up the template, I will complete the template using the complete button. And now I will move to the BGA scratch pad spreadsheet and define a template to receive the content with the proper naming and proper rotation or mirroring. In this particular case, 15 rows and 11 columns, verifying that A1 is in the upper left corner, the same position as in the data sheet. I will now transfer the content from the PDF to the BGA Scratchpad spreadsheet. Transferring the content, I now will go to the BGA spreadsheet, verify the content, and then copy the content from the BGA to the main spreadsheet. I mentioned also split tables. In this particular case, when we go up and look at the main spreadsheet, we had the pin number, pin name, and pin direction, or uh, missing the pin direction. Split tables is where we have a second table, as in this particular data sheet, containing the pin name and pin direction. We could equally import that table and then annotate the direction code to the main spreadsheet. Now, what I did, did in that particular case was I deleted two pins to demonstrate once again the integration 
to the footprint model and to be able to isolate two pins. We have 163 out of 165 pins. I will define the number of uh, pin rows to the footprint model and a number of columns. And I will define the A min, A max, B min, B max component dimensioning information, regenerating up the footprint. I now have a footprint ready to be export to my EDA tooling system. But what I'm going to do here is under info, I will select the annotation of the symbol model to the footprint. In this case, pin name, direction, pin function, and group. And if I was doing an FPGA, bank, signal names, standards, voltage levels. And let's report all pin assignments which have a missing pin name. Highlighting the two pins which I intentionally deleted in the previous case. Now I can go back to the schematic symbol builder and what I will do is go back and paste those two pins back in again completing my symbol model 164 and the 165th pin and we could recheck it and now have identified and isolated those errors correcting those errors which could occur at during user input or actually in the PDF data sheet itself. 